Hello! Today we are going to be talking about arpeggios. Arpeggios are the base of all chords, and since they are commonly used in harp music, they are an essential technique for all harpists to master. So let's go to that slow practice arpeggio. That is the first step in learning arpeggios. Slow practice is something that we have heard a lot as students and we say a lot as teachers. It's very important even though we might sometimes not think so because it can be a little boring. But it's that time when we can focus on all of those small details. So let's go to that slow arpeggio. I'm going to place um, four fingers on the strings on C, E, G, C, so just A, C arpeggio here. I'm checking my hand position. It all looks good. Fingers are curved, elbows up, my wrist dipped in a little bit, my center of resistance in a great spot. So now what I'm going to do is start with finger number four. So I'm starting from the bottom and going to go up. And I'm going to say first, am I relaxed? That is a major element in the arpeggio and in any music playing at all. We want a relaxed sound that's going to give us warmth in our tone. It is also going to help us play better. So I'm going to play that first finger, that fourth, and... Okay, now I'm going to listen. What did that sound like? Was I pleased with that sound? Was it strong? Was it weak? Did I feel tense? I think it was a little weak in my opinion, so I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to replace my fourth and play. Much better. Am I relaxed? Yes, I am. Now I'm going to go finger number three. Good. And then finger number two. And then my thumb. Now I'm checking. Were all of my tones even? Were there any of them that were weaker than the other? Did I close all the way? You do this as many times as you need to to feel comfortable. I like to do um, my slow practicing arpeggios, if it's in a section in a piece, about five times just to get relaxed, warmed up, and comfortable with them. So I'll do it again. Close all the way. All my position's good. And then my second. And then thumb. Now in my opinion, I felt like four and three were a little weak, so that's something I know I need to work on. That's typical for harpists too. Three and four a lot of times are weak and that has a lot of times to do with a compromised hand position. Much better! And I can do it again if I feel like I need to. And good! The second step in arpeggios is rhythms. And this is kind of a fun step because it lends itself to lots of creativity and so can help with that uh, boring slow practice that we did earlier. What we're trying to do with the rhythmic change in our arpeggios is strengthening those weak fingers and also just familiarizing ourselves more with the arpeggio patterns and placings. So right now what I'm going to do is place uh, C arpeggio with a C on top in my left hand, and then I'm just going to add a um, E, G, C, E in my right hand. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a long, short, long, short pattern. So that would be long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. Now what I'm doing there is just familiarizing myself again with the position, and also I can be accenting the long and not accenting as much the short, so. And then I can come back down. Okay, so there, again, I'm, I'm thinking about my hand position as well, but I'm also working on that um, balance of sound. I'm trying to get a well-balanced sound, so I'm working different fingers individually. So first I worked the first one long, and then short, long, short, long, short, long, short. So now I'm going to do it reversed. I'm going to start with short, so it will be short, long, short, long, short, long. I'll do the same thing and I'm going to do accenting on 
the first, the third, and then the first and the third in my right hand. So it would be finger number four, two, four, two. I 
I'm getting there too slow. And then when I get there, I'm slow first, and then second, my fourth is weak. Okay. So what I'm trying need to do for this is I need to figure out how to get that fourth finger strong, and I also need to figure out how to get it up there quicker. And I also want to make sure that every finger I played in that arpeggio, there were 12, counting hand over hand, I want all of them to be even. I want all of them to be equal in sound quality because I want it to sound like one big luxurious arpeggio. Okay, so what I'm going to do is start that again. I'm going to place my fingers on the strings like this and I'm going to just start very, very slowly playing my fourth finger in my left hand. Now my third finger. Now my second. Now my thumb. And now my fourth. Now what I'm going to check is how was the sound balance from that thumb to the fourth because I'm having a hand change from left hand to right hand. This is normally when we have a glitch weak area is when we switch hands. So I'm going to try that again and I'm going to listen very, very intently at that hand change. Good. That was good. So what I'm going to do now is add the next finger, which will be the third finger in my right hand. So I'm playing four, three. So now I listened to that and I said, okay, was my spacing good? Were they all equally distanced apart? And were all of the sounds equal in strength? And I think they were. So now what I'm going to do is add the next finger, which will be the second finger in my right hand. So let's go back to that. Four, three, two, one, four. That's good. Let's do it again to make sure I really have it solid before I add more fingers. Okay, I'm going to add my next finger again. And then go all the way up to two. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to place both hands on the strings. Okay, I didn't play that left hand. Did you notice that? I just placed it. I was jumping up with my left hand to my next placing and putting them all on the strings in a chunk. Not one finger at a time, in a chunk, shaping that chord before I placed it. So. last one you can incorporate all of those steps that I mentioned the other ones. One, two, and three, the slow practice. You can also do the rhythmic change, turn it into chords, and then the adding. One new note at a time till you know you have those interchanges clean and smooth. One last tip when playing those hand over hand arpeggios is to watch your elbows. It might sound funny to say that, but it's very, very key the position of your elbow when you are playing those hand over hand arpeggios. You want your elbow to be the one leading in the direction that you're headed with your arpeggio. It's like a bow and arrow. If your arpeggio is going to be placed higher up, you started here and it needs to be placed even higher, you're leading with your elbow like you would pull back with a bow and arrow and placing it here. If you lead with your hand, this is what's going to happen. Look where my elbow went. Down. Now my sound is going to be completely different from how it was here. If my elbow is in the same position, my fingers are going to be in the same position in my wrist and my palm. If it's not, it's going to change the direction of my fingers. I'm going to have more jagged placing, which is going to result in uneven and erratic sounding arpeggios, which we don't want. So watch out for those elbows.